Hey guys, today I'll be trying out some new art materials that I recently found. Whenever finishing a sketchbook, I'm always in search of new techniques, new mediums, and trying new supplies actually helps keep me inspired sometimes. Not only are we gonna unbox these together, I'll also share fun ways that you can play around and test out any new supplies you have as well. Okay, so when it comes to purchasing new things, I'm someone who loves finding good deals. I also love finding art supplies that I know will benefit my work and supplies I can have fun testing and trying out with you. Now you're probably wondering where I purchased my supplies from. I actually like to find them from different stores that have the best price. I mostly do my purchases online. I add a free Chrome extension called Karma, which basically lets me know when there are sales, gives me coupons. Don't you love coupons? I sure do. Karma is also kindly sponsoring today's video. Before we begin unboxing and testing all the new supplies, let me show you more about this all-in-one shopping assistant that can help you when you're shopping for your art supplies. Or honestly, anything really. I like to look at all of the options on three websites, Jerry's, Blick, and also Amazon. When checking one website, the price can be completely outrageous, but Karma notified me when there was a sale, and you know what sales mean? Saving money. Downloading this free Chrome extension is quick and easy. It automatically finds and applies the best coupon code for you at checkout. And since I'm always shopping around for the best deals in different stores, I love that I can stay organized with my shopping by saving items that I like from over 50,000 stores into the shopping lists. When downloading Karma, you get real-time price drop and back-in-stock notifications on items you've saved. So you can save the item and then wait for the price drop and then purchase it. It also allows you to earn cash back on purchases as well. There are always sales coming up for every season, so definitely try Karma's free Chrome extension app. I have the link in the description. This way you can shop smart, save time and money automatically. So what should we start with? I guess we'll start from the smaller things and work our way up. Most of these are things that I've been looking at for quite some time, but have never actually went around and purchased it. You see some water brushes and Posca pens. I literally only own a white and a red and a black in Posca, so I was excited to get some new colors, and I decided to try out a new watercolor brand. Now what really is the best way to begin testing art supplies? I think it's important to make time to play around and experiment with them. I have a pretty wide collection of art brushes, but ever since getting into urban sketching and plein air painting outside, I had my eyes on some water brushes to give them a try. I got one pack of the little travel set that hold a little less water and another single brush that may hold just a bit more water and has a little sponge at the tip. Now I have a specific intention I am thinking about using these for. I do love to stick to my favorite brushes and haven't gotten around to purchasing these, but with first impressions I felt like the bristles were pretty soft and it was really easy to fill it up with water. I love having control over the amount of water I place onto my brush, so I'm worried there's going to be an overflow of water if I press too hard on the brush. So right off the bat, I think it's helpful to keep a little paper towel so that you can dab it off. Now let me show you how I intend to use this brush. When going outside to draw or paint, I really like to start with some ink sketches sometimes. And here are some things I think about when it comes to ink. Any ink pen can either have waterproof ink or water-based ink. Waterproof resists the water and water-based ink will actually absorb the water. Sometimes I actually like to pair my ink sketches that are water-based ink with some light washes and I think this is where this water brush will come in perfectly. Some sketches I use micron pens like you see here and the water resists it. In other sketches when I want a little gray wash, pairing some water-based ink and this water brush can give you some great tonal values. Both options are great, it just depends on what you're going for within that sketch. Sometimes you can even pull some of that gray tonal values into your other sketches and start painting something on the side. Just be sure to clean off any excess pigment after you're done. So with first quick impressions and a small test, I definitely see myself grabbing this tool as an on-the-go so that I don't have to carry water, and it's definitely a quick and easy way to get some beautiful washes in on top of your sketches. I love working with both types of inks, it just depends on the day, but I did grab another ink pen. I wanted something with a unified line, so let's try it out. This one is water-based, so I'll be trying out that little technique I mentioned earlier. So going back to when purchasing an art supply, you have this new tool, now what do you do with it? Personally, I like to doodle from my head and just draw random shapes. I like to keep this as messy as possible and I do not seek perfection here. I actually seek the complete opposite. I look to try variety and actually make mistakes. 
This way you can really get to know your tool. And no matter the tutorials and videos you watch, it's always better to find out for yourself hands-on. So what I meant by gray washes was, once your sketch is down with a water-based ink, you can slowly begin adding slight washes to that sketch, and in seconds you have a tonal value study. I've just been recently wanting to sketch more and spend less time on setup and tools, so this combo will be perfect. And technically it has multi-use to it, and it will come in handy especially for some fast drawing. And with some immediate experimentation, check out that dry brush! So for the days where you might want to try some quick drawings out with just two little supplies, this can be a great option. Up next is one more pen that I purchased to practice some calligraphy. I also like to label my drawings whenever I'm sketching and capturing the moment, and I thought this could be a great nib to try some new typography out. I got a book to accompany it as well, but I'll mention that in a little bit. This pen comes with a nib cleaner, some extra ink, a nice booklet and some examples. All you had to do was untwist the body, load the cartridge right inside, and the manual said to squeeze it a little bit, and that way it gets activated and is able to come out. The ink was super bright, and I was definitely intimidated by the size of that nib and the shape of it, but it was really cool to play around and see that the way that you angle it can affect the thickness of the line making. I'm curious how it'll be to sketch with it, so yeah, something completely out of my comfort zone, but I'm super excited. When testing new products, I love starting with doodles, it's less intimidating. I tried to follow along the example that they had in the booklet, and to label this new supply, I just wrote the name and designed it in interesting letters. I'm curious to see if this is waterproof or not, so let's test it out. When I began applying water to it, it actually did begin to activate, but I think that's because I didn't let it dry fully, I got excited to test it out. But since that ink is staying on the paper and not blending completely, perhaps it is a little bit waterproof. But yeah, pretty cool! Up next, I picked up some Posca pens. I've never actually really worked with them in paintings before. This time I grabbed a bunch of different nibs, some thinner, some thicker, and I picked up another white for some highlights, which I love to add with these. I also got some Colerase Prismacolor pencils. I love sketching with these. These are pretty much refills, but they're great for under watercolor paintings. And I also got one more mechanical pencil to try from Pentel, 0.5 lead. And I like that the little button is right on the grip. And I'm definitely curious to see how this guy draws. No matter the level or where you are in your art journey, I always like to say that you should always enjoy the tools that you use. Pick what's best for you and see what you like working with. I've been doing these late night sketches lately, just drawing lots and to keep practicing. I'm just trying out this pencil and drawing from my head, but with first impressions I really liked the grip and it was enjoyable to use. There are certain things I look for in a pencil, but it was very smooth and I was able to get some great variation in line work. It's important to keep in mind that different tools perform differently on different types of paper. And speaking of paper, here are the ones that I picked up. I've worked on illustration board before, and I found this Canson watercolor artboard pad. They're super thick, and I thought to designate some more finished paintings on there. The illustration artboard seemed to be a bit more smooth, and the watercolor artboards are more textured. I like to have a variety of both just in case, depending on what I'm painting. When you open it up, you can actually tear them out, and the boards themselves are really thick and super durable. I usually buy them by giant sheets, and then I would trim them myself, but it takes forever and is a big hassle, so I'm glad I found them in a nice size. Also, pretty convenient that it's in a paper pad. I also grabbed the Strathmore Mixed Media Pad, since these were all on sale. All I used to draw on was the Strathmore Bristol paper. I've heard great things about the mixed media paper, so I also got myself the Strathmore mixed media sketchbook. I'm still choosing which one will be my next, but I'm definitely eager to try it out. Another one of my favorite brands. I've never tried this pen paper, but sometimes I prefer an extra smooth surface, which this has. And check how cool it is. When you open it, it has a binding to the left, and then you can place the right flap over it, and it protects the paper from the back. I thought this was super cool. 
So whenever you're drawing or inking with pens or markers, this can work really nicely. Up next, I've been wanting to do this series on little 5x5 panels. These are ultra smooth, which is what I prefer. So I purchased these, they were like a dollar or three dollars each, and I was especially excited to find this 3x9 size. I got seven of the square ones and three of the rectangular ones. I recently discovered these when I did a large painting of my pelican, it was 18 by 24 but I really loved oil painting on the smooth surface rather than on canvas. So I've been loving these and the ampersand gesso birds too. I did happen to find these to be a better price though. Before I try out some new paints, I want to unbox this package together as I'm really excited for these new art books. If you've been watching my channel, you know I love typography. I really enjoy letter forms, so I'm ecstatic about this book. This package also came with a set of core watercolors, which I'll swatch in a little bit. I ordered two books from Andrew Loomis, Figure Drawing for All It's Worth and Creative Illustration. I got these off of Amazon and they shipped in a separate package, so let's open it up as well. I've seen and heard so much about this book and I cannot wait to begin reading it. It's about making small adjustments to your habits to make a big difference. Definitely starting this ASAP tonight. And this book I've had my eyes on for the longest time and I finally went ahead and purchased it. I immediately went through it and it already looks amazing. I'll definitely keep you guys posted on how I like it. So these are the new books that I purchased. Definitely tons of information to work with here. I've been pushing myself to read a lot more and just feed my brain as much as possible. And I think I'm very happy with my choices here. So I've been using one brand for watercolors and gouache, and I happened to see these single tubes of core watercolors and mission gold watercolors on sale over at Jerry's. So I selected five of them and also purchased a separate set which you saw in the Amazon box. Here's my little watercolor swatch book. After doing some reflecting, I feel like I should take more time to swatch and play around with mixing color. And as I was getting ready to swatch these, I had a fun idea to draw the little tubes themselves and fill the tubes with their related color. There's always a way to make testing your art supplies fun and exciting. So these first tubes I bought separately. This is a Mission Gold brand and I just purchased Ivory Black. My intention to use it is for just simply black and white studies and watercolor. I have larger sheets of paper that I wanna do these cool black and white paintings with so we'll see what I can do with this one. Every purchase has an intention behind it. I just almost wish I had more time to do it all at once. I thought it would be cool to actually draw out the little tubes themselves. This way we're practicing drawing from life. We're also swatching some new colors. And to me, this made swatching even more fun. So these larger tubes are series four with stronger pigments. I did choose these because they were at a reduced price and they would usually be way more, but I think there's a pretty good color palette working here. I wanted to find a neutral tint watercolor. I heard M. Graham's shade is great as well but I'll work with this one for a little while and see what I think. Alrighty, so my initial thought after swatching, the Mission Gold Ivory Black is pretty strong and the core watercolors definitely felt rich in pigment. I did buy another earth color set, so let's swatch those too. When I open this, I really like the little tin box that can act as a palette. These tubes are smaller as this is an introductory set, but the color palette in this one are basically a bit more browns, yellows, greens, and an indigo. I already see a Venetian red, which is always a beautiful deep red, and I know it's going to be great. Since there's a little space in the middle of the sketchbook, let's draw out some little tiny tubes and swatch those after.
immediately I loved how deep these colors appeared. I definitely want to try these out on a higher quality watercolor paper as well, but so far so good. I'm also really glad I had this random idea to draw out these paint tubes. I had way more fun sketching and swatching these. I also labeled everything at the bottom. This way when I refer back to it, it'll be easier to remember and I'll know which is which. I love when product packaging has multifunction to them, and it was a great little tin box for these new tubes. I should have purchased these way earlier. These are little samples of oil pastels that I have purchased. They were just packaged in these cute little watercolor boxes. I also decided to get an orange Conte stick. It's a bit more chalky and is great for pastel paper. Specifically, I like to use it on toned paper. The two brands that I went with are just this random brand that was on sale for 10 pastels for $5, and I also picked out a few Sennelier. I'm completely new to these, but I don't know, I've just been itching to create with them. I also wanted to share my favorite big clips. The reason why I love these is because of their big handle. These do an amazing job holding back the paper of a sketchbook, and I actually found that you can hold it and it has a great grip, also perfect for some urban sketching. It's really comfortable, they do hold up a little bit of space in your bag, but I don't mind since they come in really handy to me. So yeah, I thought I'd share just in case you can find this helpful and maybe you're looking for one. I am so, so excited to try out these Sennelier oil pastels. Right away, trying out this beautiful yellow color, I was just blown away on how creamy they were. Super buttery, super beautiful colors. I'm so happy that I finally got them and can create with them. Now this blue, oh my goodness, it was the most beautiful, brightest, creamiest blue I've ever tried. And looking back, I'm quite interested on the color choices that I made here. Definitely going to consider buying a bigger set. Here are the color choices that I went with, just in case you want for reference. Absolutely cannot wait to use these. show you how the Conte stick works. I use these in art school when doing large figure studies from life, and I plan to use this with making drawings by the easel. It's just another material that's really accessible, quick, and easy to use. For this next brand, it's way cheaper than the Sennelier, and although they weren't extremely creamy, I still found them to be pretty creamy pretty high quality, and it goes to show that you don't always need the most expensive art supply to make the best results. It really comes down to your practice, your skill, and really how much time you put in. These were the only pastels that I found to have a fluorescent bright pink and orange. I chose those to have some accent colors, but as you can see, they are really creamy, and the colors are still bright and beautiful just like the Sennelier. If you have any suggestions of your favorite oil pastels, please drop them in the comments below. I love oil painting, so I'm excited to get back into some oil pastels. Last but not least, I wanted to share these things that are small yet crucial. I do lots of planning and writing, and I love me a good feeling notebook. I fell in love with the red thin leather cover, so I'm excited to use these for writing. I also finally got these small folios to keep track of all of my Patreon Happy Mail. Right now, they're all in a big stack of all the past months that I've made Happy Mail, but I really wanted to find a way to keep them organized and just keep track of all the art that I have sent out to all of my Patreons. Not only will this keep them in order, but it'll also be a great way to look back, also reflect and see how my work has progressed. much, much better. As the months go on, I'll be organized, and now I'll definitely have to get a little one for all of the stickers that I've made. Maybe a Polaroid-sized booklet will help. I hope you found this video helpful and gained some value from it. Be sure to leave a like to show me that it has, and comment below if you've learned anything new today. I'm off to begin reading all of my new books. Remember to stay creative, and most importantly, have fun in your creative process. Make time to play, experiment, and do what you love. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!